Welcome to Encountering the Word, our weekly reflection on the Sunday Scriptures. God speaks to us through our own lives and experience, through the church, and importantly, through the words of Scripture. And so we gather to read and reflect on God's Word on this day of resurrection, what the Lord is saying to us here and now, and how best we can respond to what we hear. Let us pray as we gather to listen, reflect, and be together. Teach us to listen, O God, to those nearest to us, our family, our friends, and our co-workers. Teach us to listen, caring God, to those far from us, the whisper of the hopeless, the plea of the forgotten, the cry of the anguished. Teach us to listen, O God, our Mother, to ourselves. Help us to be less afraid and to trust the voice inside in the deepest part of ourselves. Teach us to listen, Holy Spirit, for your voice in busyness and in boredom, in certainty and in doubt, in noise and in silence. Teach us, Lord, to listen most especially to your words spoken to us through the scriptures. Teach us, dear Lord, to listen. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die for it. For the iniquity which he has committed, he shall die. Again, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is lawful and right, he shall save his life because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions which he had committed. He surely shall live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember your passion, O Lord. Remember Remember your your passion, passion, O Lord. Lord. O Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. I have hoped in you all day long. Remember Remember your your compassion, O Lord. Remember your compassion, O Lord, and your merciful love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. In your merciful love, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember Remember your your compassion, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, for he shows the way to sinners. He guides the humble in right judgment, to the humble he teaches his ways. Remember Remember your compassion, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any incentive of love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy. Complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfishness or conceit, but in humility count others better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have his mind among yourselves, which was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, Every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, 
and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, and I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What do you think? A man had two sons. So he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterwards he repented and went. He went to the second son and said the same. And he answered, I will go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the harlots believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterwards repent and believe him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Ezekiel is well known for his insistence upon individual responsibility for sin. In earlier days, Israel had barely recognized the distinction between a person and the community. The overall picture was one of communal solidarity with an emphasis upon the corporate consequences of individual guilt. For example, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation, as we hear in the Decalogue found in the book of Exodus. The destruction of Israel's national institutions during the exile accelerated a new emphasis on the individual, though it had begun to appear even earlier. Parents and children shall only be put to death for their own crimes. The change must, of course, be understood precisely as one of emphasis, not as a denial of the older idea of solidarity, but as a corrective. Both aspects individual responsibility and corporate solidarity have to be held together in tension, and it requires a finesse to know just when one or the other aspect has to be given priority. In the days of apartheid, liberation theology spoke about structures of sin. It said that it was possible for institutions, ways of governing and arranging the common life of the people to be disordered and sinful. Structural sin refers to the idea that there exists a larger social dimension of sin beyond individual wrongdoing. Structural sin proposes that we can have a joint or communal responsibility for sinful actions that originate from social systems. Let me give an example of how systems work to perpetuate sin. Give a man a fish, the saying goes. You will eat for a day, teach a man to fish, and he will always eat. The problem with this saying is that even when you teach a man to fish, there are still signs that say, no fishing. So, in addition to teaching a man to fish, we have to take down the no fishing signs. There are systems in place that prevent people from fishing whether they know how to fish or not. 
the existence of these no fishing signs is a sin of the entire society, not just a few individuals. And the apartheid, the white South African minority that benefited from the systematic oppression of black people, was complicit in structural sin, even if many of these whites did not commit individual acts of injustice against black South Africans. The language we use to describe this benefit today is white privilege. Now, the notion of structural sin may seem foreign to us as we live in a society that promotes a strong sense of individualism. Our focus on personal responsibility for our own sinfulness creates an atmosphere where an individual's personal relationship with God can flourish. And that's a good thing, but there are drawbacks to it. Our ease in defining sin in primarily individual terms also allows us to miss the larger systems that foster sin. The real danger of structural sin is that we usually don't recognize it. In order to see structural sin for what it is, we need those who are victims of particular structural sins to teach us. For example, women will teach us about the pervasive structural sin of patriarchy. Black people will teach us about the enduring structural sin of racism. And the poor will teach us about the structural sin of global capitalism. In South Africa today, I believe there is another structure of sin that for years has grown strong in the dark has captured the souls of many in South Africa, undermined our institutions, and threatened our sovereignty. This structure of sin is state capture, with the attendant corruption of organs of state and business. One of the many organizations in South Africa who's spoken up against corruption is the SA Council of Churches. A few years ago, they released a report which said, We've come to recognize that South Africa may just be a few inches from the throes of a mafia state from which there may be no return, a recipe for a failed state. This is the result of this new structure of sin which has been shaping business, social, political, and government practices and decisions. For a long time, we South Africans have not recognized it for what it is. We have been blind. Those who have benefited have hidden it, denied it, produced fake news to blame others. The system of state capture is sinful. Those who take part in any form of corruption or benefit in any way from it participate in a sinful structure. These verses bring out another aspect of Ezekiel's doctrine of responsibility. And that is... An individual person can turn any time away from wickedness to righteousness and vice versa. In each case, that person will be judged by the new life to which he or she is turned, not by his or her previous life and choices. Now that's precisely the point which Jesus is making in the gospel today. The person who did the Father's will is the one who says, yes, yes. Rather, as one who said no and then repented. Let's pray together now as the Lord himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the The kingdom, kingdom, the the power, power, and the the glory glory are yours, now now and and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, you are always calling us to new life. Grace us through your word, the word that we have heard and pondered, to know you more clearly, to love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly each and every day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, friends, for encountering the Word. We look forward to being with you again next week.